So let's try to answer the question, what is negative frequency? And this often comes up to confuse people when they first start thinking about Fourier transforms. So let's think of a, a cos waveform. So xt equals cos, and let's say it, it is at a particular frequency of omega naught. Okay, so the another way of representing this is in complex exponentials. So let's do this now. So it's e to the minus j omega naught t plus e to the j omega naught t times a half. Okay, so this is a way of representing the cos waveform. And you can look up Fourier transform tables to find out that the Fourier transform of this uh, waveform has two terms and they correspond to these two complex exponentials. Okay, and it equals pi and corresponding to this one here is uh, delta of omega plus omega naught. And there's another term that corresponds to this one, which is delta omega minus omega naught. Okay, this is the Fourier transform. And then we plot that Fourier transform uh, with respect to omega. And this is, uh, this is probably where the confusion often comes in, or the question often arises. This is two delta functions. The height of those delta functions is pi, and one of them is at the frequency omega naught. That's this one here. The delta function here is shifted to the place where omega equals omega naught. So that's omega naught. And the other one is at negative omega naught. And it's often now that people scratch their heads and think, what is negative frequency? What does that really mean? It's important to remember that what you've plotted here is not, uh, well, in this case it is, but it's it, in general it's not the entire function. You have plotted here the magnitude of the Fourier transform. Now in this case, the magnitude of the Fourier transform is the entirety because the phase equals zero. But don't forget, there's also an angle. For any complex number or any complex signal, there's an amplitude and a phase. Okay, now in this case, for this signal, this cos wave, the phase is zero everywhere. Okay, it's just real. This equation here, this signal here, only has real elements. There's no plus j of something or other. There's no complex component, just real in this case. Okay, but the question about negative frequency, uh, it's important that we think about the complex number. Uh, so let's, let's go back, let's take it, sort of go back through this and think, well, where did that negative frequency come from? It came from that term in the Fourier transform. Where did that term come from? It came from this signal. Now let's remind ourselves what these signals mean. Okay, so this here, these two here, these are just numbers which vary with time. And as you vary them with time, they move around the unit circle of a complex plane. And this is where, again, we need to think of amplitude and phase. It's both amplitude and phase. So let's Think of where this number is. These two, if we just ignore the half for a minute, uh, these two have unit amplitude. This is what this means, this complex representation. Unit amplitude and a phase of omega naught t. So this is the, the real part. This is the imaginary part. And this is where we reference our phase from. So that number there, this number here, is that point which moves around it, the angle of that point there, the amplitude is one, and the, it moves around the phase, is the angle is omega naught t. Okay, and then this one, this is where the negative part comes, the phase, this is a signal of the phase of negative omega naught t. Okay, now I always like to remind ourselves what these look like in real signals. What does it mean? What does, what does this complex number mean to be moving around? Well, let's plot out the imaginary component of this waveform as t changes. So we're going to plot this as t changes here. Let's plot the, this point here. This point starts 
with the zero imaginary component here when the when t is zero this phase is zero and it moves around this way which means it gets bigger then it gets smaller again as it moves around here it's going to be having a smaller imaginary component then a negative imaginary component that gets that gets more negative and then goes returns to zero so this is our sine wave for this one and for this one well, it's a negative sine wave. So as it moves down here, it starts getting negative, and then it gets positive and negative and positive, okay? Now, for the imaginary component, we're adding these two components together, and when we add these two, they exactly cancel, and the result is zero. Hopefully, I think you can see that. So this is in the imaginary component, it's zero. And that's what is down here, uh, showing that this is real. The Fourier transform is only real, there's no imaginary component. Now what if we take a look here and we sort of plot this around, we take the, a look from there, that direction, which is in the real axis, and we plot that function here. And then in this case, we're starting at here at the value of 1. Okay, and as this one here moves around, this one is getting smaller in the real, then some negative, more negative, then less negative, and back to one. Okay, this is our cos wave form. Now what does the other one do? Well, it also starts at one and gets smaller, then negative, then less smaller, and back again. So it's the same wave form. So for these two terms, they have these two points, but in the real axis, they're both cos waves. So when we add them together, we're going to get twice. Okay, so this one, in the imaginary direction, we added them together and got zero. This is imaginary, and this is real. In the real direction, it's twice. That's why we've got the half out the front. Okay, and the half out the front gives us back the cos wave form, which is what we had originally. Okay, so coming back to here, let's map it back to here. These are, these are, this is a real signal, it's a cos waveform, it has zero imaginary component. Uh, it can be represented by these two points moving in the complex plane, one with a positive angle, one with a negative angle. What does that mean in terms of the, this representation? Well, it's moving around with a rate given by omega naught t. If omega naught's higher, it moves around faster and this one moves in the other direction faster. And it, so it's going to be moving at a frequency given by omega naught. One of them is a positive frequency, it's moving in the positive direction. One of them's a negative frequency, all that means is it's moving in the negative direction. It's typical to think of higher frequencies as being waveforms that change more quickly, and then you potentially get confused thinking, well, what's a negative frequency? But hopefully now you can see that a negative frequency is simply moving in the other direction. So a bigger negative frequency will also be a waveform that changes more quickly. Uh, it's just moving, changing the other direction with the opposite phase. Okay, so don't forget to like this video and subscribe and see some links below for links to other videos that explain related concepts.